So I'm riding a little three-year-old filly that is uh, by a stallion that I own named Getting Impulsive. Uh, this filly's name is Getting Frosted. And uh, we showed her some last year as a two-year-old. And, uh, and we give her a little time off. We're just kind of getting back started on her here. Um, we're gonna show her for the first time this year here next month. So she isn't maybe just 100% ready to show, but she's getting pretty close. Um, in Western Pleasure, you know, it can, you know, there's been a lot of bad talk about it and this and that. Um, but it's really a pretty, pretty neat class. Uh, you know, it just the biggest thing that you're working on or looking for is the quality of movement and uh, disposition of the horse. You want to see them using their ears and looking like they enjoy their job. Uh, that, you know, that's one of the most important things. They need to look like a pleasure to ride. Um, I always, like when, I, when I'm looking for a pleasure horse to buy one or something like that, I always think about it, well, can my mother ride it? If my mother can ride it or somebody else's grandmother or something like that, it must be a pretty good horse. It's got to look smooth, easy to ride, where it just kind of floats across the ground. Um, those are hard to find though, so that's the ideal. Um, a lot of times we don't all have the opportunity to ride a horse quite like that, but that, that's kind of what we're searching for in a pleasure horse. Um, as this mare's walking around, you see she has a nice four beat rhythm to her walk. Um, you know, got a kind of a happy look to her face. Um, nice rhythm and flow and consistency. And I like it when they like, she's looking around here a little bit. I, I like that in one. Um, I don't want them to look drawn down and overtrained to the point where they lose their expression. You know, they've got to be very disciplined, but I don't want to take that expression out of one. We'll try, move around up here to the trot. I like the jog or the trot. That's a, you know, a two beat gait. You know, kind of a one, two, one, two. That, you know, should be very rhythmical. Their front right, their right, <clears throat> front right foot and their, their left hind foot should hit the ground at the same time in that diagonal pair. If you get one going too slow, like see if I can get her to do it here, I'll, I'll just kind of slow her up. The slower, see the slower she gets, she's starting to lose that rhythm a little bit. Starting to lose it there a little, it feels like getting a little lazy, getting a little lazy. I don't want that. I want to keep her up here at a nice, nice rhythm. That feels good there. I believe she's trotting very good right there. And at all the quarter shows anymore in all the open and amateur classes, they, they, you know, they'll call for the extended trot. And, and all you're wanting to do there is just move them up a couple clicks. And there's no real right, right or wrong speed on that. It's just you want to show a lengthening of the stride. Where, uh, you know, where it's a little more ground covering than the slow jog. Like this would be an adequate extended jog. I call it a medium trot all the time. And then for our lope, this mare, I really like how this mare lopes. She has a lot of self-carriage. Level top line, she's got a happy expression to her. Just sort of floats around the ground, floats along the ground and it's real easy to set, real easy to ride. She's got, you know, keeps her feet real close to the ground. That's one thing I like to look for in one. If she doesn't have any bend to her knee and her hock swings up under, underneath her pretty good. Uh, one thing this filly does that's it's a high level difficulty it's to go lope slow like she does and hold her head and neck still. Like she holds her head and neck relatively still. Oh, and that's, you know, that's what we're all as pleasure horse trainers searching for, trying to create. That is something that's harder, it's easier said than done. Um, and, but this mare has a really natural ability to do it. As you can see, she's just loping around here, like just having a good time. Uses her ears well. A 
Whoa. What I always kind of joke around is my job as a horse trainer is to try not to screw up what Mother Nature made. And every day I, I think about that when I'm, when I'm riding, I'm like, well, I don't want to take anything away from this horse. So like, that is a combination of breeding and, and, and just kind of staying out of her way and letting her do her thing. Um, she's a talented enough horse where she can do that easily without a lot of, I don't have to get in, get in her way a lot, try to make it her slow down or anything like that. When she was, we rode her for the first three, four times, this was the speed she loped. I mean, she's naturally that, that you know, naturally she wanted to be a pleasure horse when she hit the ground. Um, but that is, a lot of that is breeding. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the training wise, you just try not to screw it up is how I think about it, you know, as far as their movement. Um, but uh, breeding takes the most of it, you know, the, the horse's ability to do that. This filly sire is a horse called Get Impulsive that, that I own and shown. I, I purchased him as a two-year-old and uh, I showed him until he was five. And uh, um, he was such a, I mean, he was by far the most talented horse I've ever rode. He just had such a natural ability to just walk, trot, lope. He could change leads. He could do anything he wanted to do. Never one day when I rode him, I ever felt like I needed to try to make him better. Um, I was, uh, uh, I won the NSBA World on him when he was three. Um, I won the, uh, I was reserve on him in the Congress when he was five and reserve at the AQHA World Show in the Junior Pleasure when he was five. And uh, I showed him at the Congress as a two, a three, a four, and a five-year-old. And uh, he was a, at worst a top 10 every year there. Um, just a really nice show horse, he, you know. And what made him a good show horse was that everything was so easy for him. I didn't have to get there and have a big pep talk with him every time before we went into show. Like, oh, boy, you need to really try hard today, buddy because he just did, it was just easy for him. He could put forth 70% effort and, and still be better than a lot of them. That's kind of what we, we dream about or love to happen. It's not an everyday occurrence you run into a horse like that. Um, and, he's, and he's throwing that in his babies pretty well. Like this is, you know, they all have that natural ability. They can all walk, trot, and lope. And as a trainer, that makes your life so much easier when you're not, ha you're not having to think about, well, I need to make this a horse lope better, jog better, or be better minded. They, they just, they just, they're, they're born to do it. <laughs>